Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Yves Massard, Product Marketing Director for Identity and Access Management Solutions at HID Global. Yves, welcome to, uh, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here on our discussion of uh, cybersecurity and risk management and identity and access management. In fact, let's talk, one of the things we always heard about is there's certain things that are certain in this world, and that's death and taxes, but I think you could add government regulation mandates to that category as well for number three. And let's talk about the government mandates in terms of cybersecurity compliance. What do you see out there? Yeah, absolutely. So we're seeing more and more government mandates in that area. Cybersecurity risk is uh, an area that's becoming more and more forefront. It's, uh, it's been there at the federal level and uh, it's becoming uh, more and more prevalent also at the state level. And we're seeing a lot of uh, mandates that are being applied in different sectors. So it's not one size fits all, but what we're seeing is more at the, the sector area. So for example, if your government organization is working with the IRS, you might have to comply with uh, IRS PUP 1075 if you're getting taxpayer information. Um, if you're getting access to um, a criminal background check from the FBI, you will fall under the CGIS. Um, if you're, um, if you're uh, prescribing um, uh, controlled substances um, in New York State, uh, you, uh, you might have to uh, use uh, digital certificates in order to be able to prescribe and then fulfill that prescription if it's done uh, digitally. Uh, so there's uh, lots and lots of different mandates that are coming from uh, different areas. Um, they all have a lot of, of things in common, but they all have also specificities to each of their different sectors. And it's certainly true that it's not only the federal government, the state government gets involved in that, everything from elections to the opioid is, uh, issue. Yeah, absolutely. So um, um, on the election uh, area, as you know, it's uh, something that's very distributed uh, from the federal to the state to the county level. Um, and you have the federal level that's uh, providing grants, the HAVA grants that uh, help uh, election uh, organization to uh, be able to shore up their cybersecurity defenses. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, let's shift a little bit and talk about identity and access management. It's such a big issue. And uh, when we've talked to you folks from HID Global before, I always recollect my early days as a CIO in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the biggest problem we had with, uh, with this kind of thing involved some of our employees looking up uh, the professional athletes' tax returns. The things have changed a lot. That still happens, but not as much. But certainly the, the threats are, are a lot grayer. Tell us about the entire landscape of where identity access management has evolved over the last few years. Yeah, so if you, if you go back, you know, uh, uh, you might have had uh, some uh, security measure, but a lot of it was around uh, username and password. Uh, nowadays, it's all about uh, multi-factor authentication and zero trust. Uh, being able to make sure that the right person has access to the information or the application uh, and, and not somebody else. Um, and uh, you're seeing a lot of new technology standards and best practices that are starting to be adopted. Uh, zero trust is one of those where really it's uh, all about making sure that uh, you always make sure that it's the right person that's ac accessing the application. Um, and part of making sure that you can do that is uh, being able to have a, a secure identity so you know it's the right person and, and not somebody else that just gets the password um, from, uh, you know, from, from uh, a trove of password that was found on the internet. You know, identity access management seems to always begin within a particular department, but it has to evolve. There's, there's, there's more complications as you spread it around having interagency uh, access as well. Talk about that challenge. Yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's something that's really also dependent on the organization at the state and local level. Um, you, you're right that quite often, you know, there might be a specific department that, have a, that may have a stronger mandate or might be earlier than their colleagues in adopting stronger security. Uh, but at some point, you know, in today's connected world, the organization needs to work with each other and then the question becomes, how do they know that uh, an employee from, or a contractor from a different organization is the right person? Um, and there's, uh, you know, there's not one size fits all. Uh, different, uh, uh, different states have different ways to approach that. Some states look at it from a centralized standpoint where they might uh, uh, set up a shared service provider uh, that will essentially be the federation for the, for the whole states. Uh, other states prefer to go maybe more decentralized um, and in which case, you know, there are also technology that lets you provide a 
secure identity that mm -hmm. can be verified across different organizations with things like, uh, for example, digital certificates, where even if you didn't provide that secure credential to that person that's coming to your application, you have a way to verify that it's the right person, making sure that that's, that person is who you think you are, and then you can grant them access per your policies. And certainly with the advent of uh, mobile devices, it's added an extra layer of complexity to this whole issue as well. How are we addressing that? Yeah, so I, I think what's really important is really looking at your application, you know, what is it that your user wants to do and how they're going to access that. Um, because depending on, uh, because there's, there's many different options that are actually available out there in terms of uh, technology and how you plug into that. So it's really important to uh, take a, a survey of the land, see what you need, and from there you are able to um, uh, find a solution that works for your users. And it might not be one size fits all. You might have a pocket of users that needs some kind of uh, um, type of security, while another pocket of users might need something a little bit different. And so the, the industry provides you uh, different ways to tackle that problem depending on what's more appropriate for your population of users. And certainly, uh, the, we're going to talk a little bit more about telework, but uh, it certainly uh, is, is in, certainly at this point in time with the coronavirus, it certainly is the forefront. It's, it's uh, ripped from the front page headlines, right, about the, the issue of telework. And as I've always said over the years, uh, and I've been saying this since I was a CIO back in the mid-90s, and we were talking about uh, continuity of operations, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And I, I talk to my colleagues, my fellow CIOs, and I'd say, you know, if your governor came in tomorrow and said that the employees couldn't come down to the main campus of uh, the Capitol, are we prepared? Are we prepared to be able to work to continue operations or not? And I want to tell you, I didn't. I didn't get some real good answers to that, and I still don't. We're going to take a little break right now. My guest today is Eve Massard, Product Marketing Director for Identity Access Management Solutions at HID Global. I'm your moderator, John Thomas Flynn, on the discussion of cybersecurity, compliance, and risk management, sponsored by HID Global on Federal News Network. <laughs> 